Hi folks, thanks for joining us on this episode of Let's Live Code. Uh, today is the first in a series of videos that we're going to use um, to look at how to apply effects, audio effects, and title. Uh, there's a variety of different effects that we can apply to our samples. Uh, we can add effects by adding the number sign, the effect, and the level of the effect after the sample. So let's go ahead and take a look at a simple example. This example just starts off with four snare drum clicks. Now, if I wanted to apply volume to the snare drum clicks, I'd simply type number amp, which is our uh, signal that we're going to be dealing with volume, and the level of volume from 0 to 1. And clearly, as the um, number goes up, the volume gets louder. As the number goes quieter, the number gets softer. Now, we can also pattern out amp, much like we could pattern out snare drums. So, Now, the first two clicks of the snare are soft, and the second two clicks of the snare are loud. Um, if I wanted a different amplitude for every single click, then I would just simply type in four different values, like so. Um, 0 0.2, 1, 0 0.6, and 0 0.9. And that's basically how we handle effects in Tidal. It's pretty simple. Um, but there are a lot of effects. Luckily, all of them are going to follow this sort of format. So let's go ahead and look at another example that's not amplitude. And let's start off with a different kind of sound. And to do the sound, we're going to use the sample Tink. I'm going to have two beats in the measure. The first beat will have four clicks. The second uh, beat in the measure will have two clicks. And this is what that sounds like. And the effect that we're going to apply here is something called coarse. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start the effect, and then I'll talk about what is actually going on here after this. So what exactly is happening here? Um, this is an effect called coarse, and what coarse does is it fakes the lowering of a sample rate. The sample rate, again, is the number of audio snapshots that are taking during the digital to audio conversion. So to better understand how this is affecting the sound, we need to understand something called the Shannon-Nyquist theorem, or the sampling theory, which is basically says uh, to reproduce a sound in the digital domain, we basically need to be able to sample twice the highest frequency in order to accurately represent the number of samples that we would actually need. So we take two times the number of the highest frequencies will give us the samples per second that we would need in order to accurately represent that. And just to give an example of that, um, if I had a recording and say, for example, 4,000 hertz was the uh, highest frequency in that recording, then I would need at least 8,000 samples in a second in order to accurately represent that recording. Since the range of human hearing is from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, we generally need a sample rate at slightly higher than double in order to accurately produce sound. And this is why the average sample rate for a CD is 41,000 hertz. Um, so with chorus, what we're doing is when I give it a value of 2, we're essentially having our sample rate from 41,000 to 20,500. So anything above almost 10,000 hertz isn't being accurately produced. Um, and it's producing changes of timbre to our sound at inharmonic ratios. So with that in mind, I want you to go ahead, I'm going to play this again, and pay attention to the higher frequencies and how they change um, over time. And I'm going to be much more drastic with sort of how I present this so it's a little clearer to how the sound course is actually changing what we're hearing. So let me go back over to here. And we'll keep on playing with the values of this over time so you can hear the changes. Let's try that. All right, and let me go ahead and put this back to where it was in the beginning. 
And just like we did with amplitude, we can pattern these things out, right? So I can have a different sample rate on the first half of the beat than I do on the second half. And if I wanted to make a different sample rate on every beat, it would look something a little bit like the following. Now an easy way to set values to continuously last every bar is to use the greater than less than signs, which will set a specific value that we will uh, specify for every single cycle. So let me go ahead and bring that up and play that. Five, four, nine, good. All right, so course is just one of many effects that is available to you in Tidal. Um, let's go ahead and look at some others. Another common audio effect that you might want to use is a delay line. A delay is simply a copy of music uh, that's delayed by some amount of time. And to do this, what we're going to do is just add it to the end of our code. Um, we'll have more than one effect that we can simply apply. We can chain them together by just using the number sign. And this will create a signal in our chain. So the first property of delay, then, is the level of volume that you want that delay line to come back in at. And so for us, it's going to be 0 0.9. Now this is getting a little hard to read clearly, so it's great to sort of separate our code out onto multiple lines so we can have a clear sense of what's going on. We can do this just simply by hitting enter right after the hashtags. And as soon as we evaluate one part of that, it'll evaluate that whole section. Now, the next part we're going to look at is delay time or delay T. They're the same thing. You can see two of them right in there as you begin to type it up. And that simply is the amount of time in seconds that it takes for that line to come back in. Great, and the net last parameter that we're going to look at is delay feedback. We can start to type it in. Uh, you have two choices, delay FB or delay feedback. They both do the same thing, which is it uh, pastes a copy of the line back into the signal chain at a certain volume level. So you have the choice between 0 and 1 is the volume line that the delay feedback line will run into itself. So let's hear what that sounds like. Now just for kicks, uh, listen what happens to the feedback the closer we get to 1. So never ever write a value greater than one for the feedback, and this is why. What's happening is the line is being amplified louder than when it started. So when it's fed back into the VCA, where it's amplified again, um, it gets louder again, and it gets louder and louder and louder the more it's fed back, which is our feedback loop. So do not make that mistake. That's a good way to break gear. Also, delay, um, among a couple other effects, is one of the effects that's a global effect, which means it will affect multiple lines of code. Um, there's a workout for this using another parameter, but we'll look at that in a future video um, just for time's sake. So let's look at another effect that we have available, which is something called Leslie. To use this effect, um, I'm going to use a different sample, this one being a guitar sample.
Leslie is a really great effect for beefing up a sound or making a sound sound a little bit richer. It sort of a, replicates the sound of an old Leslie rotary speaker, um, which itself was a companion piece for the Hammond organ. And the effect is somewhere in between a tremolo and a chorus. Um, because this guitar sound has all that nice um, distortion in it, there's all those nice harmonics, we can bring some dimension and body to that upper part of the sound. So let's go ahead and look at that. The first parameter that we have for the Leslie is the wet dry mix. Um, it, with zero, it is nothing. With one, it is completely wet. The next is going to be the speed of the LFO, which is the speed of the motor. Um, this is in seconds. So if you put it uh, 0 0.7, that would be a very slow motor. 6.7, that would be a very fast one. We're going to go ahead and set it at two. And then the last one is that the size of the Leslie cabinet, and this will be in meters. Um, so for our example, we're just going to use one meter to start off with, and then I'm going to affect each of these so we can hear them in time. So I'll start off by affecting the wet and dryness of it. Um, let's go ahead and listen to that. Now I'll go to affect the speed of the motor. You can hear that it gets faster and faster. And the last effect really affects the Doppler amount or the amount of the pitch warp. So that's completely bananas and wackadoo. So we will get away from that. Uh, let's look at the way Leslie was actually kind of intended to be used, um, which is really kind of to be a more subtle thing that you would use to sort of enhance the flavor of sound or of a character of a sound to have, make it sound like it has more presence. <laughs> All right, Leslie can be a really great effect. Um, let's go ahead and look at another effect. Uh, we're going to look at some frequency shifting in uh, Tidal. So to use that, we're going to use something called F shift, which you can see there. So what Freak Shift does is it implements a single sideband amplitude modulation known as frequency shifting, which isn't really to be confused with pitch shifting. If you think of pitch shifting, pitch shifting shifts the incoming signal by musical intervals, which is done by multiplying or dividing all the frequencies within a signal. So to pitch shift a signal by an octave, we simply multiply the frequency by two, um, thereby it preserves also the sort of harmonic relationships within the signal. Frequency shifting, on the other hand, involves changing the frequency content of a signal, but in a very different way. Uh, frequency shifting works by moving each frequency in a signal by a set amount. Um, so, for example, we could use 1000 hertz for every frequency within the signal that is shifted by the same amount, and this means that the harmonic relationships within the signal are completely broken. <laughs> And you can hear that it has that really nice metallic um, biting kind of characteristic to it, uh, even by subtle amounts, right? Like if I even did just 10 hertz, that's enough to break the harmonic frequency. And as you might have already guessed, there's another one called Freak Shift Note. And that shifts the note by pitch shifting, and you can hear that the harmonics are the same as we move them up and down.
Great. And the main thing that I kind of wanted to point out from that is that you're shifting up the harmonic series. You can tell that it started from an octave, then an octave and a fifth, then an octave, a fifth, and a fourth, and so on and so on. So that is frequency shift note. Um, finally, let's look at one last parameter. And to do this, actually, I'm going to go ahead and pull up another guitar sample, one that does not have any distortion to it. So we'll just use guitar. And the next effect that we're going to look at is something in title called Squiz. Um, and what it is is a simplistic pitch raising algorithm. It's not meant to sound natural. It's meant to sound reminiscent of some sort of uh, mixture of filter, ring modulator, and pitch shifter, depending on your input. The algorithm works by cutting the signal into fragments, delimited by upwards going zero crossings, and squeezing those fragments in the time domain. In other words, simply playing them back faster than when they came in, leaving silences in between. And you can use it like a distortion effect, which is why I needed a clean guitar. All right, folks, I think that is going to do it for this episode of Let's Live Code. Uh, thank you for joining me. And as always, if you have any comments, concerns, questions, death threats, hate mail, please send them in the comments below, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. On the next episode, we'll continue looking at various effects and how to apply them and ways to get musical effects. Take care.